Welcome to episode 52 of Crave the Book. In today's episode, Amber and I cover chapters 41 through 46 of Tracy Wolf's Covet. And in today's episode, we get a glimpse of Hudson's room. Super duper exciting. We also have some pretty fun comparisons of Hudson and Jackson through Grace's eyes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Woohoo! Episode 52. 52. <laughs> 52. And we get. We We've literally get been some, doing this exactly a year. It is. This is our year episode, guys. So, Technically, it would have been last week, but we did skip one week. We didn't skip a week. We did. What? Yeah, we we missed we missed one of the weeks when um when you, when you when your when your little puppy dog. Oh, that's right. Sleep. But you we did a we did a we did an episode. You and Scott did an episode. <gasps> so it has been a year. Yeah, it's been a year. Okay, I remember skipping a week, but then maybe it was just not listening to your dulcet tones of your voice. Well, either way, it's been like in terms of like time frame, it has been forever <laughs> one year of this and we're all ready to covet. So super duper exciting. Maybe within uh, this, you know, next year we will have it all done and we will be free of these binds that shackle us to this podcast. The yes. whole, this this could be a story in itself. It's like one of those one of those things where you're stuck inside a video game and you have to battle your way out. Except it's Amber and I, and we're stuck in a podcast, and we're just trying to get like climb to the end of this book series. But then Tracy always announces one more book. We're like <laughs> no, like we're, we're we don't want to look forward to it, but we are looking forward to it. <laughs> right, we're stoked that Tracy announces new books. It's the fact that. We have to read them as quickly as possible. Rather but also, than we're on them. like we're maybe not even a quarter of the way through Covet, and we've been doing this a year. <laughs> I know, I know. Lar- we always say we're going to read larger chunks at a time, but we—it's hard it because is. we get to the point where, like, actually, we've written an hour's worth of notes to then not then stop. Yeah, would mean we'd probably have to get rid of some of the less important. And that's what where the funny stuff comes from. So, yeah, we got to keep it funny. But guys, uh, (laughs) if you haven't joined the Facebook group already, go to the Crave the Book podcast tea room where you can laugh at all of our silly moments. Um, Last few episodes, we have been posting them a little later. So if you ever notice that, because normally we we used to post at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays, but it is currently 10.55 a.m. Wednesday, and I still have to edit this thing. So if you ever notice that the podcast is running a little late, it will always be posted between Wednesday and Thursday. (laughs) It's a busy we, we try, but there's uh, certain things that um that happen on like Tuesday or a Wednesday that then it means that our schedules kind of conflict. Like right now, I have a digger in my garden and four dogs in my house. <laughs> and we have no front fence, so they have to go out at scheduled times to make sure that they don't run out. And then my husband's using like a hammer drill and like big loud machinery. And uh, there's a point where I'm like, can you just stop for an hour? And he looks lost. He's like, I don't know what to do for an hour. What can I do for an hour that doesn't make any noise? And you were the same with your kitchen for yep. five weeks. So, seven weeks. Yeah. Seven weeks? Yeah. Seven do weeks. you now have a kitchen yes. that is worth seven weeks? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth seven weeks, but it is no. done. So that's all that really matters. But yeah, there there things pop up, guys. But it will always be posted every week unless an emergency pops up. So, uh, yeah. So I don't quite remember exactly where we left off because I read yesterday morning, and since then I've also read some of Crush to uh, my daughter Taylor. So now I'm like, oh my goodness, what's happening? I know that um, Grace was waiting to hear from. Hudson and Jackson, and it was like three o'clock in the morning because they just got in all kinds of trouble. Well, Hudson did. Jackson didn't do anything wrong, but Hudson got in all kinds of trouble because he got in a fight with the werewolves. 
downstairs, like in front of everybody. And Finn figured that Jackson also had to be responsible because where there's one Vega, there are more Vegas. Um, it's too much of a coincidence that he found them in the same room as well. Yeah. Like, if he wasn't in the room, then maybe Jackson might have gotten away with it. <laughs> yeah. But he was stood right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Grace is freaking out, waiting to hear from them. And finally, she gets a text and she assumes it's going to be Jackson, but it's Hudson. And he basically says, like, everything's good. Everything's cool. Um, yeah. So notes are starting with yours because I don't know the context. Well, we're, we're, we're a year in and uh, you still don't know when to stop for the spoiler section. Nope, I forgot again. <laughs> guys, if, so guys, <laughs> if, this is, if you're a first time listener, there's a sound you got to listen out for. You have to tell them what the sound is. This sound is, of course, the wolf howl. If you are listening and you get to the wolf howl, that means that everything after is going to be either the rest of covet related or court related. All of my notes are court related. Yeah, I mean we're at the we're we're at the second to last book. So if 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 yeah. I mean they all spoilers pretty much have to be court related. Yes. Um, and I, we just don't want to ruin anybody's like experience of reading the rest of the books. So if you get to the howl and you haven't finished the books, drop out, come back again, and uh, we hopefully will not have ruined your day by revealing something very like crucial to the plot. Yes. But we are... Anyway. <laughs> in Grace's room... And I yes. cannot remember the context of this quote. Like, I, I know I remember Hudson saying it, but... Um, she starts trying to talk about other things and making jokes, and he says, you're deflecting. And she's like, how do you know that? And he went, because I know you. And that those four words meant a lot to her, where she was like, uh, he, he said a lot in that those four words. Like, he really does. He really does know me. And even if... I put out a portrayal of who I who I'm feeling right now. He knows and can see through it. He's like, nah, bullshit. You are worried, and you need to let me know that you're worried so that I can at least fix it. I'm always that um, person, though. I've no, I, I, I do have like my husband is able to kind of do that for me, but I notice that in most of my friend groups, I'm that perceptive person where I'm like. It was uh, what's wrong nothing bullshit like <laughs> yeah I, I think that also it meant a lot the fact that she was obviously struggling to sleep mm -hmm. and uh having hudson message her and say sorry that dragged on meant that he knew that he had kept her waiting yeah whereas jackson is just a little twat this entire time <laughs> like yeah He's the worst. It does make me wonder how soon out of Flint's of uh, Finn's office did he message. Well, Grace said something about it sounded like almost like they were together. Like maybe Jackson didn't message her because he knew that Hudson already had. Is this the part in the bonus no, chapter? No, it's the other way around. Hudson didn't answer how Jackson was because oh. then Jackson messaged her and it, she said... Um, Hudson never answered my question, and I guess it was because he almost knew that I had already got my answer. Do you is this where they is this where Hudson and Jackson go on a jog together? I think so. I think the they, they definitely chapter. they're definitely spending some time together as brothers at the moment, and um, it, it was definitely a case of Hudson going, "Yo, Jackson, just just pop Grace a message. She's she wants to know you're okay." It was a it was yeah. a crap message though. It was like a short like, and he never answered. Yeah, it was very much like I'm going to send you one word answers to make sure that I've done my job. But that's it. Ugh. Um. 
And um, I've definitely been in the situation where I have fallen asleep waiting on a boyfriend's answer. Oh, with the phone in the hand, too. Yeah, like the just the desperation of the continuation of a conversation. Oh, I, I put that in in the channel. The for those who don't know, I wrote a book, um, and I put that in where Vivian is waiting on Ryan to message her back, and she's holding the phone, just staring at the screen, mm-hmm. and then like. She just falls asleep and wakes up, and then she's excited because she's like, "Oh, I can!" I, I, she opens up her phone and she's like, "Oh no, he must have texted me. He's probably worried sick." And then there was nothing. He hadn't even read the yeah. last message she'd sent. And I was yeah. like, "Oh, I've been there. <laughs> That's the most painful." I've definitely been there. I've also had the the. I just wanted to know that my husband was safe, and um, I had to force myself to stay awake, even though I was at that point where you you can't force yourself to stay awake. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he was giving a lift home to a heroin addict. Oh, no. Um, she was in our car park just knocking on people's doors because um, she didn't know where she was. She thought that she was near her grandmother's house and she was not. It was like midnight. And obviously no one was answering the doors because um, one, you don't answer the door at midnight. And two, everyone's asleep. So they probably didn't hear, or if they did, they're going, I ain't opening. No, nope. I wouldn't. That couldn't be anyone. Um, and uh, yeah, Scott went out and, and had to make sure she was okay. Um, and uh, she said, oh, you're not the police, are you? And he's like, N- n- no, <laughs> you're all right. You're not the police, though. And he's like, no, no, I'm not. I live over there. Like, why are you here? And she goes... I've done a bad thing. <laughs> and he was like, oh, God. I would have called the cops. <laughs> well, he was like, I would have had she not gone, you're not a, the police, are you? I guess then and she knows where you live, too. That's yeah. It's, it, yeah. Um, and he was like, I never said my name. I never like gave her any details. And we're locking our front door. Like, every time we leave the room now. Like, <laughs> nope. Oh. Um, but yeah, he, he took her home. And he, he obviously came to tell me, oh, by the way, this is what I'm doing. And I woke up out of like a deep, deep sleep for him to tell me that. And I, I kind of just didn't answer him. And he went, ah, and he thought I'd fallen asleep again. And I just remember him, me saying as he was leaving the room, don't get stabbed. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. like uh, please don't, don't die. Um, and he drove her home. And the whole time I was like, please text me to let you know that you're like, you've dropped her off. You're on your own in the car and you're safe again. But it was more, not because of violence, but because women feel that ob- obligatory feeling of I need to pay somehow. And she didn't have any phone. I've seen some movies like wallet. that. Exactly. And I was like, oh, what is she going to try and... Proposition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know that like my husband is like absolutely not going to do that. But at the same time, when somebody is like that, there may not be a... a a reasoning way out, a logical way out of that conversation without him just going, N- no. <laughs> so yeah, that was that of my fear. And then, uh, yeah, he texts me. And he's like, I'm on my way home. And I could just remember like forcing myself to just wake up constantly to just check that my phone had lit up. Um, it's awful. It's that, that awful, awful feeling. And as a teenager, it's even worse because you're, hei- you're, you're heightened. Your, your emotions are so strong for someone you barely know, really. Um, and I, I feel like she just wants to know that everybody around her is safe. Like, she wants, she has that balancing. She's a gargoyle. She wants everything to be just so. And she can't. She can't control it. Um, and Hudson, he seems to kind of be aware of that. And he's like, I'm not being a pussy. I'm not being whipped because I'm texting my girlfriend, not girlfriend, to let me, let her know that I am okay. Yeah, he's and he's done this on multiple occasions where if we were talking about like bros hanging out situation and it was just the bros, the bros would be like, you know, oh, you know, you doing this, doing that, just basically trying to, you know, you know what I mean? You know how dudes are when they're yeah. all together. It's it's like it's the uncool thing to do to make sure that like your girl knows what's going on. When you're when yeah. we're talking about teenage boys, and Hudson is always the one who's like, "No." Like when everybody was kind of dogging on Grace's idea to go look for the crown, Hudson was like, "No, wait, she's right." 
so yeah I, I feel like sometimes that obligation to just go do you know what like this woman or this girl even if um she doesn't mean that much to me i mean a lot to her and therefore she's gonna want to know not just where i am but i'm safe it's not she's being nosy she's not prying she's not being jealous of who i'm spending the time with she's not nagging uh, she's just concerned for my my well-being and my safety and sometimes just uh hey i'm safe i'm okay is fine or yeah i've reached my destination i'm good yeah that that like that immediately removes that need for anxiety and um i remember i, w- I was driving on saturday i went to go in um meet my friend at her house and i sent her my whatsapp location my live location for my drive and she goes look i don't need this like i'm not gonna track you and i was like this isn't just for you this is also for me that i have now told you where i am and if i get stuck somewhere you will be the person that will know where i am and she goes, oh. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a reassurance on both sides that, like, I am safe. I am still moving. My car is heading in your direction. If you see that my blip suddenly goes in completely the wrong direction, you can go, okay, she made a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> are you okay? But some people don't understand that. Yeah, just... some people aren't, aren't in tune to it, you know. Yeah. And Jackson definitely isn't because if, if he... He obviously knows that Grace stayed up all night waiting. And it's Do you just, think he does? You I would assume so. Why else would she be awake at three in the morning? It's just I in it's pure fuckboy behavior to just yeah. to to and and especially when you consider the fact that maybe Hudson was the one, even though she he, Jackson has texts from Grace waiting on his phone because she said that she texts them he has texts waiting from her and rather than respond to them he's he was just not going to because hudson did right away i don't know yeah i think i think he doesn't really he, well i don't i don't know whether it is because of the reasons that we know or whether he's just like you're not my concern anymore you're not my responsibility anymore therefore i don't need to tell you where i am or how i am yeah like just as he was leaving for London and didn't bother to tell her. Yeah. He doesn't he, But then I'm wondering whether when he was her mate, whether he would have told her as well, because he went to the blood letters without her. He he did he discussed like ending the mating relationship without her. Yes, it was very early on in the relationship, but it did definitely mean that he didn't take it as seriously as everybody else would at that age knowing oh wow i found my mate at 17 or however old he is and i may i should probably put a bit more effort into this but he didn't he's rubbish yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so what's our next note next note we've uh oh so we we uh we get the insight and the the Jackson's um, tower was apparently too depressing <laughs> to yeah. do a study session in. Yeah, there was no so, seat. There's nowhere to sit anymore. It's all gym equipment, so they can't have yeah. their study session there. No, so um, th- they're going to go into Hudson's room. And as Tracy is is describing it in, in uh, Grace's viewpoint of of what is in his room, my thoughts were just like, did like they get it airlifted in like all their household furniture and like. I, Grace literally turned up with a suitcase. Like somehow Hudson and Jackson were able to bring in like entire library, their own furniture, gym equipment. Do, do they have Amazon Prime and you can just buy shit? It's one of the little drones that <laughs> drives the guy himself. <laughs> can you imagine it's, that? Like pulling in an ottoman. You just know, to, it's even you better. You might need one on each corner. <laughs> Better than better than a drone. They've got they've got the Harry Potter owls toting that shit. It's like up with the balloons, except it's just a bunch of owls all tied together. Um, <laughs> the thing is, I can understand like dragons. Maybe you could, they could carry quite a lot. They are huge, but vampires, even though they're super super speedy and they can fade to go get things, it's not like they could carry their entire house. <laughs> 
they're strong but not that strong and do you reckon they do like a husky sled like they put it all in a <laughs> toboggan and just pull it all the way depending on what the stuff is well apparently it's loads and loads of books and i have moved maybe eight nine times in my life and my books are the heaviest boxes of all <laughs> yeah they are because like every time i'm like filling up a box i'm like i could fill up this box more but then i'm not going to be able to lift it <laughs> Maybe there is a good thing that there's a pocket of air at the top <laughs> where I can, I know that I'm like, okay, okay, I can carry this one and then try and lift it. And it's still really heavy. Maybe there's some magical witchy explanation. Maybe they do. Maybe they do have portals and things. But they were, but it didn't apply to Grace. They're just like, nah, screw her. She can, no, she can carry. You, you can just bring two suitcases, even though your parents have just died and you probably can't have many heirlooms left. Your drum You can kit. come with just, just <laughs> clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the poor girl, she didn't bring anything with her really, and then ended up having to turn up at this thing. Even though she knew she was going to Alaska, she didn't have any like outside worthy clothes. Macy managed to source all of them for her. Like, what did she actually pack? <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't think. She, I mean, a oh god, I don't think she packed anything. What was in her suitcases? She didn't have. I any, don't know her pajamas and, and, and stuff. It, it also sounded as though, like, she didn't have any conversations with Macy and, like, the the bit beforehand either, where she's like, look, I'm coming to Alaska. Do you want me to pick up anything from San Diego for you? Like we did. But, like, do you want do you want to try anything this British? Thought we could fill a suitcase with things. Like, she's talking about how the price of Pop-Tarts is. Grace could have started, like, a, a black market. How? In Pop-Tarts. <laughs> To fill up a suitcase with pop tarts and start selling them on the sly. Well, what I want to know is like, I mean, though though the fan art often doesn't depict it, Grace is a is a bigger girl, especially compared to Macy, because when she tries to wear Macy's clothes, she talks about how like you know her bits and bobs are kind of falling out of them. How did Macy <laughs> even know what size to buy? What if what if Grace got there and all of the clothes that Macy like put in the closet were like extra smalls? And Grace so is like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Oh, God. Like, none of this is going to fit. My worst nightmare. Yeah. It's like, by the way, it's um, it's not just Grace, you can't go outside because altitude sickness. Or Grace, you can't go outside because it will kill you. It's Grace, you can't go outside because you don't have any clothes. <laughs> All you have are your pajamas <laughs> that you brought. Yeah. Um. All right. I reckon they have some form of, like, ordering things. I'm sure. How else do they get, like, food there? Because, like, yes, I know I know that the princes are rich and stuff, but Hudson's been dead for a year. Like, does he even have his own money? Well, that's what I said was, like, did they did they just leave his room there? They didn't they didn't touch it. He that would has, be depressing. I mean, they're uh, even cobwebs even alone. When Hudson was in Grace's head, there were so many occasions when he could have just been like, look, I know the world is overwhelming. I've got something to show you. Go down go down to my room. Here's my room where all my stuff used to be. And you can just hang out there for some quiet time. Like, yeah, I got a 3D printer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why does he have a 3D printer? What is he printing on it? <laughs> okay, so so I'm putting, I gave you homework and you didn't do it. So now you get to... I'm drawing it right now. Oh, well, now from, you... but from memory is my issue. <laughs> oh, okay. So I put in the Trello card. In fact, I will note it on here at 25 minutes. Now, keep in mind that um, this is like not good quality, uh, beautiful artwork because I am no artiste. But I did my own little rendition of how I think that Hudson's room is laid out. So the first image, I'll put them on screens. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you, you will be able to see it. I have Hudson's bedroom, how I picture it, with um, the pillars are the strange teeth, the four strange teeth at the top and bottom of the blueprint. Uh, with shelves kind of in between them, the axe throwing in between the others on the opposite wall. I, I don't know why, but when they describe him having a fireplace, I almost picture there being like an extra seating area uh, closer mm -hmm. to the door with the fireplace, especially when we talk about him burning like the poem book 
in that one bonus chapter that we got. And then the main seating area being more centralized with his bed in the rear of the room. Um, but then I also did a beautiful picture. Of Your perspective I, is perfect. Huh? Your what? perspective is perfect. I know. The table all splayed out, the legs like way stretched. <laughs> I, I don't know why I could not. My brain doesn't work in three dimensions. So, um, And I also picture there to be two couches but I couldn't draw. I like your little murals on the on the pillars. Yeah, yeah. Cool. She said, and I like your. Th- is that three D printer? <laughs> yeah, a little three D printer and a little horse beside it. And uh, he's. She said that a bunch of camera equipment. So I put that in mm-hmm. the middle, and the record player and and uh, speakers. But I almost picture it to be like a low bookshelf, um, like waist high. And then items, all of the items that she talked about, his record player and his cameras and stuff kind of sitting on that, like, waist-high shelf. Yeah. So that's my, my beautiful... That's, my, that's cute. My beautiful artwork. Amber's, Amber's is going to be, like, magical. You guys will... Yeah? Because I draw rooms so often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an interior designer in any way, shape, or form. Actually, maybe I might have gone to Google SketchUp. <laughs> well, get, when you next next episodes, give us your, uh, you know, ideas for what Hudson's room look like, and then we can we can draw this out for two episodes. So, guys, you mm-hmm. you let us know in the comments on YouTube what you think of my Hudson room, and then next week you'll get to see Amber's Hudson room, and then you can tell us which Hudson room is better, or which one fit your vision more. Or I might just draw, you know, Grace's fantasy of topless Hudson in the blood red sheets. Oh yeah, she walks into his room, and what did she call him? The 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 fuck me bed. <laughs> what did she refer to? I don't know how I'm going to read this to my daughter. We're in crush. Nope. And then I, I knew that Covet was going to be, um, I was going to have to censor. But now I'm like, oh, God, how do I censor that? A lot, a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. But yeah, she, she kind of like describes it as like a bed you have to climb into. And I'm like, I have quite a tall bed. Like, and I think you do as well. Yes. You have to jump. Yeah. I have to jump in. Um, you have to, yeah, you have to jump in. And um, because we both have very, very tall husbands. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, is it taller than that? Like, are we talking like cabin bed? Is there a ladder? I'm picturing, I'm picturing it up on like a platform, like, you know what I mean? Like how like the old school like castle beds used to sit up on like a riser, like a, a, an ornately decorated riser. I put that in my yeah. like top down. They're not blueprint. very comfortable to um actually do what she was calling the bed. What? If there's like a if there's like steps leading up to it. Not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> When we, uh, when I was on uh, my honeymoon on a cruise ship, the bed was the opposite, where it was too low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like I think that she, I think she's got this idea in her head that it is really, really tall and really like to climb into. But, but maybe just it's small. just because, yeah, maybe because she's just short and like it's like our beds are quite tall, and that's because to a tall man getting a short bed doesn't make any sense because if you roll out of bed in the morning and you put your legs on the floor, if your knees are above your belly button, that's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I mean, that's much sexier than going into a boy's bedroom and seeing either a bunk bed or a mattress on the floor, like or a mattress corner. on the floor. Exactly. Like I like so far he's pulling points. Yeah, yeah, we were we were mattress on the floor people for a while. I've been. But with, you were already together. That's true. It wasn't like you met Mark, then went to his bedroom and went. Oh <laughs> no, he was still he was still in like a little twin bed because he was only seventeen when or no he was eighteen. What's when, a twin bed? Twin. It's like the average adult normal size one person bed. We just call that a single. A twin. Like a twin room is when you have two of them. No, that's that's that size is a twin. For why i don't know 
<laughs> because there's always a pair. <laughs> I have no idea. That's just what they're called. It's so the, the twin room. So the sheets are called. When you go to called. a hotel and you order a twin room, a single is a single bed. And if you order a twin, there'll be two. And if you order a double, there'll be a double. Double beds, right? Do you, you don't have a double bed. No, I have a you have a You have a king, king size, super king size. King. King. We have a super king, right? That's California king here. Okay. So, yeah, when we, <laughs> whenever we go into a hotel and we get into the double bed, why is he so close to my face? <laughs> just like, you know, when you just like, you turn around, you're like, whoa, you are, you're not expecting them to be that close to your face. <laughs> We never, we never get a hotel with a bed that is smaller than the bed that we have at home. We'll beat each other up in the bed. I don't think. Like, I, I think that they're very few and far between. Oh, it's here. standard here. You you get to pick your bed size. You do have bigger people though. We do in America. Our people tend everything to be a is bigger. bigger. Yes. I remember arriving at your airport and being like, "Why is the toilet so large?" Oh yeah, I have to do a run and jump. Everything, <laughs> everything in America is way bigger, especially the food. Um, so speaking of toilets, did you mention that he has a bathroom? A bathroom? Does, he doesn't have a bathroom. He doesn't have a toilet. Not his own, no. Does he have to have a communal one? Because, like, Grace has one with Macy. Uh... I don't know. Do vampires... I like to think of there's like a little pocket room. Maybe. He does He does have to have a shower because it, he does have a shower later. Does he? In the prison. Yeah, in the prison. Spoilers. I don't know. But yeah, he does... He, like, I think he, he has to shower. I don't think... Do they, do they, do they, do they go to the toilet? Do vampires poop? Did we, did we answer that debate? <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't. Oh, goddamn. No, that was a whole... So maybe he, maybe he wouldn't need one, but he would still want to be clean. He, no, I think that he's... He, well, maybe they're like cats. He just lit- Maybe that's what Sykes Sandalwood and Amber smells like is... Hudson Spit. B.O. <laughs> oh, B.O. I, th- I thought that he was like grooming himself like... <laughs> Oh, like a cat? Yeah, like a cat. Then Maybe. He yaks up a I, I like to think of like, you know, like, not cats, but you know when rabbits wash themselves with the double paw? Oh, that's the cutest. <laughs> Can you imagine him doing that? A little scrubbing <laughs> his, his face with the backs of his hands. Just and then pulling his ears down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scrunching his whiskers. Uh, anyway. <laughs> this is a weird episode. Um... So he has uh, axe throwing. We have mm-hmm, axe throwing mm-hmm. right down the street from our house, which I have not yet done. Um, looks fun. Haven't done it yet. It, 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 I don't. I don't even know whether there's an axe throwing anywhere near us. <laughs> I don't. I can imagine it's really difficult. Well, I've seen a lot of videos of people throwing the axe and it bouncing like butt end off of the wood and like coming back at them, and that's. 100% what would happen to me. Oh, yeah. Or, like, me, I would throw it and it wouldn't get enough momentum to even get near the target. It would just go straight into the floor. Yeah. Or my foot. <laughs> you know those, like, videos of people trying a bow and arrow for the first time and pulling it and then it ends up just going straight into their foot because the string is too taut for them to do any- anything? It just it falls limply to the ground. That's me. That's that's absolutely me. Like there is no aiming there. It's uh, there is a malfunction in my muscles that mean that I cannot do anything physical. I wonder if there was any. I mean, we do get a couple scenes with the axe throwing that I I enjoy. I think that it was a nice mm-hmm. touch, especially there is a bonus chapter where Hudson is throwing axes, um, and I really enjoy. Such an angsty hobby, huh? It's such an angsty hobby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's like listening to Breaking Benjamin while he's doing it. Like super sad. <laughs> like that's perfect. Um, yeah. So Grace is looking at his red. In or the his diary be- of Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what uh, Without You is what he was listening to. I, I remember that because um, Mr. Moore can sing Breaking Benjamin quite well. Mm-hmm. He's, he's mm-hmm. in a band. But um, <laughs> so... Grace is looking at Hudson's bed. We've we have talked about Hudson's room for like forty five minutes. 
<laughs> um, she's looking at his bed and she gets all red faced because she's thinking about like him laying in the bed. And then he pops up and she's like, oh, you're in jeans. You're never in jeans. And all I could think of was like Christian Grey and his Dom jeans. <laughs> like he the jeans that he only wore for for sexy bondage time. Yep. What is it about like a well like somebody who always dresses like if someone dresses super duper fancy all the time and they're always like in slacks or something and then they put on jeans like that's that's the hottest thing in the world. But likewise, it's the daddy vibe. Well, if they're always in jeans and a t-shirt and then they dress up, then that is is it just the fact that it's different? It's the fact that it's different or the fact that they've done they've actually had to put some thought into what they're wearing because it's not their usual. Yeah. So therefore that means that they've tried. Even though someone who wears Armani every single day of the week and then suddenly goes into jeans, it might look to most people that they're like, Oh, they didn't try today. And it's like, well no, actually I this is this is me trying. Yeah, sometimes this is me trying to look like relaxed and comfortable. Yeah, occasionally I will have a day where like I'm dressing up, but I will purposely like wear leggings and like a sweatshirt, and I'll put my hair in like a messy bun because I want to have like that lazy mom look. But that's not how I normally like would dress up, so it looks put together. Does that? Yeah. You ever like try to aspire for like a lazy look? Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't look great. It looks like I did not try. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that that's how it looks from the from an outside perspective with me too. Like, look at this. Look at this bum going to the grocery store in her oversized sweatshirt and leggings. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, Gray says, you know, you never, you never, you we never wear jeans. And he's like, I've been alive for two more than two hundred years. Grace never is a long time. And I'm like, well, says he never nevered. <sighs> like how many other things has he done because actually saying 200 years is a long time and i'm like well we've actually find out that he wasn't really out of his house for most of those that's true so he probably hasn't really done that much but jeans i think is negligible because that's a clothing thing <laughs> that's not an experience thing no <laughs> though yeah. if i had to be like locked away somewhere and forced to wear jeans and like a bra i would probably go on a rampage after I escaped. Yep. Yeah. So he, uh, they're still waiting, by the way, on the rest she's of the crew. She's stumbling around as well. She's really struggling for conversation. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's like clamoring up like. Because uh, she's, uh, she's starting to kind of realize that like, oh, Hudson is attractive. And here are all these personal things about him. It's like when you enter someone that you like, you enter like their territory, their domain, like the area that is completely catered to their life. It's almost like you start to pick up things that make you like that person more and appreciate them because you get little glimpses of who they are in their most natural state. And I think that that's where she starts to feel more attracted to him. But because of that, she starts feeling more awkward. And she, she you know, he asks if she, he can play some music, M music, some music, and she says... You're getting tongue-tied. <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever you've already got there. And, it, and <laughs> he's it, like, are you sure? And then it's Godsmack. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know the song, right? I don't really? really know much of Godsmack. And I asked Scott as well, and he was like, I don't really know much of Godsmack. And he was like, oh, what's the name of the song? And he played it, and I was like, that is definitely not the kind of song that a 17 year old girl that normally wears hot pink and is like oh sparkly at most things would just sit there going yeah no i i like it it's really good <laughs> i'm like you're lying <laughs> yeah mr mr moore is a big god smack fan and th this song yeah. played on the radio a lot when i was a teenager i don't know what it is but like my i feel like god smack was like my mom's like generation like was really really obsessed with Godsmack in particular and Mudvayne and I think it's just that that kind of like rough you know mm -hmm. but because it I don't know 
The, yeah, I think it's funny that like every word you, sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, but also you tend to have a favorite song that is on a loop because of the feelings that you're feeling at that time. Yeah, and so I'm had, just wondering was Hudson whether it. <laughs> Yeah. Like especially if like the end of this this scene, he does say like Grace you're blowing hot and cold and I think that he's he's he wants everything, but he's like, I don't know how to get it. And that is kind of like the lyrics of the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well he he is able to quickly fix that by turning on Grace by not by turning on Grace. I mean, well, they almost, they almost, they almost, they almost again, they almost, almost, and then Macy walks in like, "Hi guys!" and it's because Grace sent her a text saying, "Please hurry the fuck up." Yeah, <laughs> um, save me, save me from this torture because I don't know what to say. So actually, it's Grace's fault. That's true. It's she could, she could have just calmed down, and she also could have equally had messaged Macy and say like, "Could you just like hang back a bit, or could you stall people a bit?" Like, and well, Macy, being Macy, would have absolutely done that for her. Sometimes <laughs> she would have get yes, I will be your wingman. I will. Well, sometimes What's you the set up cock block. You set up pre- preventative measures to ensure that you don't do something that you don't actually want to do in the heat of the moment when you might end up wanting to do it. For example, uh, if you're going on a hot date, but you don't want to sleep with the person in order to prevent yourself from doing that, wear the ugliest pair of granny panties that you own. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, you'll, you know, just put on your like nasty, holy period panties. And you will, I mean, you're either going to, ball those suckers up and shove them down in your pant leg <laughs> or <laughs> or <laughs> it'll be enough of a deterrent to not let him see you naked. Yeah, you're, you'll be like <laughs> maybe next time. It'll make you What's think What's the twice. male equivalent? What's the male equivalent? <laughs> like Not washing your, aw, your fellas? Skid marks. Ew. I didn't mean skid marks. I meant your, your bean bags. Your bean bags? Not washing your bean bags. <laughs> Ew. So the crew arrives. Flint's got tacos. Uh, Eden's got a broken nose. Um, yeah, they've, they've all been essentially tortured and beat up and terrorized by all factions. other factions. Um, again, if you were listening to the spoiler section from last week's, Liam is nowhere to be seen. <coughs> Phoenix. <laughs> oh yeah, Liam and and Byron. Neither of them are are there. Nope. Um, or Raphael. So, yep. That's just further. That just furthers my suspicion. Mo- lots of suspicion. Um, and uh, yeah, like everybody's kind of like very protective of each other once they realise that they've all kind of had the same treatment. And um, Hudson asks Grace whether she's been like bullied at all. She's like, no. Nah. No more than usual. And he's like, um, I'm sorry, are you saying that someone's messing with you? And I'm like, come to me now. Come to me, daddy. <laughs> um, and she's like, well, well, yeah, but what else is new? <laughs> I will destroy them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, they, they all find out that they're all kind of getting beaten up. And it's not just made vampires. It's also born vampires as well that are causing the issues um witches and dragons are all getting they're, they're all getting the same treatment so i i i did have a point in my spoilers section but i'm not really sure whether it is entirely true still however i will bring it up but i wrote i wrote it before flint got beat up as well oh well we're yeah. almost there so <laughs> We'll touch on it. Um, um, but yeah, M- Macy tries to um, to fix Eden's nose. <laughs> and Grace, um, Grace pulls out her stupid first aid kit. Yeah. Again. Again. And does nothing with it because Macy's like, no, 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 I'll do it. I want to touch my precious girl. <laughs> Yeah, and they're all like, "No, we need to, we need to like take you to the infirmary. We need to take you to the nurse." And she's like, "Nah, it's all right, I got it." And then snaps her nose back into place. Uh. The most hardcore, like, "No, nah, no," nah, like dislocated shoulder, pop back into place. We're all good. 
Eden's just Can a you imagine badass. if she set it wrong? Oh, no. Like, you could absolutely do that. You can break her nose, think that you've set it back into the right place, and then it will just grow wrong from then on. Yeah, you should never, ever try to reset your own bones, ever. Nope. Nope. Unless you you're will. a dragon. And, yeah, but then even then, I'm like, do they? Would they heal in the same place? Would they, or would their body go? This is wrong. We need to fix this. Yeah. This is uh, who? Who knows? This whole thing, though, it was another moment when they they have identified that everybody's getting cuffed. Everybody's getting you know those the magical blacksmith cuffs that limit their powers put on them. They've all got them, huh? They've all got them now. Yeah. They're all wearing power dampener cuffs. Jackson isn't. I swear every single train in the world is going past my house today. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't think Jackson has one on yet. And Grace obviously doesn't have one on. Um, but it's like, this is another prime moment when they could have gotten Finn involved and said like, hey, you know, we're all getting messed with really, really bad. And here's what we're suspecting. Like, Maybe it's not a good idea to take our powers away right now. Maybe maybe because we're the ones who are being attacked. Like, this doesn't feel right, especially with everything that's happened over the last, like, few months. I just don't understand why Finn would think that it's a good idea to leave all of these kids who are getting bullied more than ever, like, leaving them vulnerable. Yeah, I am wondering whether A... Jackson and his order have even told Finn that come graduation they're going to arrest Hudson because he seems surely shocked. that would mean that like okay well at least huh I said wasn't he sh isn't he shocked at graduation yeah I'm like why didn't they tell him that and then they did like the, the hey like the stupid teenage thing of like no we can't tell him we, we can't tell him because he'll he'll try and interfere. And I'm like, that's because you're teenagers and you don't communicate effectively enough with adults to say, look, I know that we're children and to you, you may be our authority right now. However, if you do do something, we are all going to be worse off. We are telling you because you are a voice of authority and you may now have a solution that we might not have thought of. However, the solution that we think you're going to do is going to be irrevocably wrong. Please don't do this. Yeah. But the children don't. They they go, no, 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 I, I can't tell my parents because then they're going to do this. Or I, I can't tell my headmaster because then they're going to do that. They're going to growl me or they're going to do this. I'm like, well, actually, there are so many other outcomes to this that your immature brains might not have come up with yet and that's not an insult that is a you don't have the experience the life experience to know that there is many other ways of escaping a situation yeah and and i mean death is worse than getting in a little bit of trouble like <laughs> yeah like, they could have absolutely gone to Finn and say, look, at graduation, Cyrus has said that Hudson is fair game and he is going to arrest him, take him to the prison, and he's going to hope that Grace is going to just follow because being separated from your mates is unbearable. That said, we are now getting some very strange conflicts at school that we believe is a distraction. It's a... What's the word? Uh, like a look at this whilst right. this is happening. Pay pay attention over here. Sleight of hand, like so. Yeah, like there's there's something happening at the school that I feel like is taking all of your attention away from what's actually happening. We want to make you aware, but they just don't. They're just like, no, we can't tell him because what if he, what if he then goes to Cyrus and makes everything wrong? Yeah. Like, I know oh. Finn is not the greatest headmaster, but I don't think he's dumb. He would be a better headmaster if he was informed as to what's going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that he didn't have six to eight teenagers right. with different paranormal powers just going, we're not just going to tell him, we're just going to do it. His daughter being one of them. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Th <laughs> they decide instead of talking to Finn that they're going to go to the giant sooner rather than later, which 
Mikai is super duper. They're, they're all quite excited about it, but they don't really describe the, the giant village to anybody. Yeah. They're just kind of like, yeah, like we've been here before. We know all the traditions, apparently. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're bringing up like all these things. And Grace is like, what the hell are you talking what about? Are, what are we doing? Yeah, there was a really like awkward moment where, um, is it, it Macy suggests that they do Gorbachlam? Mackay. Mackay. Mackay suggests that they do Gorbin Slam uh, with with Macy and uh, that apparently is only for couples. Which the drinking Which, age is four, 14 and they have to drink yeah. a big giant. Yeah, like, but there's a really awkward moment where Grace is like, oh, can can I do it? What is this? And uh, Hudson pipes up and gets, it's only for couples, Grace. Which is like a, ooh. Ooh. In front of everybody, I mean, she qu- she quickly covers it up, and she's just like, "Well, w- me and Yo, e- Eden, yeah, me and Eden can do it." <laughs> like, I don't like I don't like beer, but I'm pretty sure we could <laughs> wipe the floor with Finn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's like there's, there's like some fun ideas in in the giant village, and um, there is a point a point after she uses the Eden kind of get out free jail card thing and um hudson kind of smirks and was like touche and she says i really enjoy the battle of wits with him because he makes me forget about my anxiety yeah and i was like yeah it's true like it's true but at the same time you can't forget about it just because you're arguing with someone right <laughs> like maybe you should deal with that rather than just go do you know what instead i'm just going to be really bratty and argue the toss uh, with somebody that I know it will match my my stubbornness, but at the same time, I'm going to ignore my issues. Never talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sure that, like, you could both apply the same logic and stubborn, like, argumentative wit to the issue. Um... Like me and my husband, we we make light of my my issues. Like he asks me to drive, and then he goes, "So, how's that tummy?" And I'm like, "I don't feel very well." <laughs> like, like he knows, he knows that if he makes light of it, I don't then feel like the situation is so serious that like I am going to panic about it because he's just like, it's literally nothing for me to drive. It's fine. Yeah. They, they don't seem to do that. They just kind of avoid the issue. And then he's like, you're deflecting. And then they have a really serious conversation instead. And I'm like, you can continue the lighthearted, you know, like you could, you don't have to be serious I think this it, whole time. It's hard. It's hard to write scenes like that, though, to express both emotions because it's very. Um, Without sitting callous. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. A bit mean. Yeah. All so right. Should we move on to spoilers? Let's do it. Woo. I didn't have any. <laughs> so um yeah my fir- my first note about flint and the dragons mm-hmm. which i, I kind of think should probably be taken back but I'm, I'm gonna say anyway just in case do you think that the dragons are remaining relatively unscathed within the arguments and conflicts at school because cyrus is trying to not allow yuri was it yuri is that her name yes. nuri nuri mm-hmm. um, yeah. to be like on his side she like he needs her to drop them in it because in the next couple of chapters they obviously go to the giant's village but then they go to the dragon court and the first thing that she does the moment that they end up at her door is arrest hudson she yeah. Well, here's the thing. She still it, she still holds a grudge Wait, no, against it's first, isn't it? What? The Dragon Court is first, then the Giants Village. No, Giants Village is first. Okay. Then they go to Dragon okay. Court. Well, I think that Nuri here's the thing. She's she is spiteful towards the vampires because her other son was killed due to Cyrus and Hudson. So I think that it was more of a personal Thing. She's sending them to a prison, not she's sending them to Cyrus's prison. Yeah, exactly. I think that it was behalf. more like she she was able to have like yeah. It, it's it's almost like her little her little secret weapon if she's got Hudson under wraps, because then she's getting her revenge. But she can also maybe think that she can control Cyrus because maybe she doesn't realize that Cyrus doesn't really care about Hudson all that much. 
Like you, okay. you took my son, I'll take yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of thought that like Cyrus kind of not just had her in her pocket, but was able to kind of blackmail her a little bit into giving them to him. But yeah, you're right. I think she did it out of her own gain yeah. of revenge. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my second note was a quote that I was like, damn, that's so true yeah. and continues for the rest of the book. And I think Flint says it. No, it's Grace. She uh, think it's. I don't think anybody says it. I think Grace... It, they thinks, do say it. Oh, do they? I thought Grace just thought it. I think it's Luca, actually. I think Luca says it. Um, uh, whoever it is, they say, how do you control powerful men and women all around the world? You threaten their children. Mm-hmm. Um, because Hudson tells the group what his the real plan was behind when he went off the rails and pretended to kill people and which no himself. one's asked him that yet. Yeah, yeah, like poor dude. Like no one's ever asked like asked him his motives or like why did you do it? Um, he they all find out that essentially Cyrus was going to kill the second born child of all paranormal families. Was it second or if first? If they didn't, I can't remember, but any any that had more than two. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like this is then very, very true. At the end of cover, uh, they come back to the school and all the children are gone and they stay, they remain gone for most of court. Yeah. He, um, he and Cyrus is up. able to manipulate a lot of the factions because he has their children. So he's using the same tactics again, but in a, more controlled scenario his first plan failed so instead he went right i'm going to use the same tactic but i'm going to use the same bargaining chip but i'm going to do it better and no one saw it coming and you would think that finn would put up a better defense like Protecting Hogwarts was like a whole big thing. Like all the teachers were involved, the students were fighting. No, in in the crazy, well, they can't. They have they all wearing bracelets. That's true. That's true. Well, the teachers every weren't. single child. Well, I mean, I don't think that they have very many teachers, do they? Oh, that's true. <laughs> no um, one's going to class. We've only gotten a couple of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, Did they have all of the teachers in the dungeons? Yes, I think because so. Because the only one that they managed to rescue was, was Finn. Like, written. I was w- the only, well, the, the only one was Finn. The school was completely empty aside from the nurse, so I would assume... God damn her. Damn her. Yeah, I would assume that they got everybody. Yeah. I don't know. They can't hold them to ransom. Yeah, but... No one cared about them. They were only... <laughs> They're like, we want the children. You missed whatever his name, Baylor. What is, what's his name? Ba- Baylor is from House of Dragons. Yeah. Uh, um, what's, what's, what's ba- Baden? Ba- Baydor? Ba- I can't remember. Werewolf. Werewolf astrology guy. <laughs> Nobody cares about him. <laughs> huh? De Mason? Maybe. I don't remember him. That's how much there was of an Bader, impact he made. De Mason was the Bader. Bader? Yeah. De Mason yeah, is no, the giant. No one cares about those teachers. <laughs> no, nobody cares about no. these teachers. Where did they go? May, well, I would assume that they all live at the school. So if they're not at the school, they didn't just notice that the kids were gone and then be like, oh, cool. Vacay. <laughs> oh. Cancun. Yeah, they all just took off together. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a very, very interesting and poignant quote. And um, it kind of outlies the rest of the, se- the series, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and then the next thing was the Giants Village and Gorbaslam challenge. And I just remember t- Trunk Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's I forgot I, all about that scene. You know, I loved in court, I loved Baby Flint. Was it Baby Flint? No, it was Chicken Flint. I love Chicken Flint. Chicken Baby Flint Mackay. and Baby Mackay. Yeah, Baby Mackay, Chicken Flint. I love that scene. But Flint drunk singing, like, yeah, that was probably my favorite mm-hmm. with Calder carrying him. I, I, I really do yeah. think that that was my my favorite um, Flint scene. I laughed there so are, hard. There are a lot of funny scenes in the rest of Court. We've got 
We've got that scene. We've also got the um, when they're in the prison and Hansel's like, you want tacos? I'll get you tacos. How many tacos? Do you want? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Um, yeah, like there is like so many like little moments of just like, oh, that's really funny. Yeah. And I'm going to remember that every time I read it. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, what's what's really fun is I'm reading them with um, with Taylor and we're we're just to the point where Grace wakes up in the casting tower after her body gets taken over by Hudson, doesn't even know that it's Hudson in her in her head yet. And yeah. Uh, and. I keep asking Taylor. I'm like, I'm like, well, what do you, what do you think of Flint? Do you trust Flint? And she's like, no, I hate him. Like, and I, I just, it, it's so cute watching her. You know, she's she's got she's some great suspicious. conclusions though that I didn't even consider. She thinks she's very, um, she's very decided on thinking that the reason that Grace is pushing Jackson away and that Jack, that Grace, you know, feels weird every time. Uh, she tries to get close to Jackson is because she just Taylor keeps saying that's not Jackson that's not Jackson that's Hudson impersonating Jackson like she's convinced that Jackson is <gasps> oh. gone and that, that Grace's gargoyle is pushing away because it knows that it's not actually Jackson she thinks that it's Hudson doing like some type of like glamour oh. which is which is way more insightful than I would have come up with so yeah. her theories are are damn good. Yeah. Speaking speaking of Grace's gargoyle, her gargoyle uh, does pipe up during these chapters. Um when she's talking about all the feelings that Hudson makes her feel. Um and she says like Hudson's like the sun, um, warm and inviting and, and things like that. Um and then she it's she said a tiny voice inside her mind says, and safe. He makes mm. you feel safe. And I was like, ah. Like her goggles, like hello, excuse me, you're safe. Tap tap tap. <laughs> hello, <laughs> stick with him. Crawl into. She the- does compare them, doesn't she? She compares Jackson and Hudson because they're they're both tackling the same problem, and it's the fact that born and made vampires are attacking other vampires in the order, and he's like, how different they are at addressing the issue Mm -hmm. and she's like jackson is like a raging fire that's cold um meanwhile hudson sits there quietly burning and asking questions that you don't feel are relevant until they are which is way Um, more attractive yeah and i was like oh like she then kind of compares them and says like who would be best for king um, cause she says like they're both kings in their own right, but she's like, Hudson seems to be more of an em- empathetic king that he would be more loving towards his audience. And it was like, yeah, he, she's right, but she's gone be making the gargoyle king instead. <laughs> and he's going to be a housewife. <laughs> the, the house gargoyle. House, housewife, housewife, husband. Uh, the house husband. House, hu- house, hu- house, husband, Hudson. The house. That's the name of the. T- <laughs> that's the name of the podcast. House, house, house. Husband, husband, Hudson. Hudson. Okay, perfect name. Um, <laughs> also, he keeps his bedroom very neat and tidy, so therefore he he'd be good at the cleaning. Yeah, got to break those, especially those, if he hasn't been there in a year. <laughs> break those social stereotypes. Yeah. I bet he wears a mean apron when he's naked. <laughs> Just the apron. Just a naked butler. A naked butler. <laughs> the butler. And the front will be one of those, like, um, Michelangelo statues. <laughs> K- kiss the cook. Yeah. <laughs> Grill daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Is that it? That is it. Oh. That is it. Oh, what a what a what a ride, guys! What a ride! Thanks so <laughs> well went. <much. laughs> Thanks so much for <laughs> listening. Sorry, this episode was a little late. Things have been a little bit busy, and things are busy for Amber and I throughout the holiday season as well. So we might have a couple episodes that run a couple hours late, but they will be posting every week. Um, Feel free to join our Facebook group. You can find it by searching Crave the Book Podcast Tea Room to chat with our listeners and occasionally us when we're not super duper busy. And yeah, guys, thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.